Hi, this is Keith Weaver with the Top Executive Strategy Podcast, where CEOs, COOs, and business owners share strategies for better success. This is six questions in nine minutes because the best strategies are concise business advice. And so we're going to be concise and get right to our guest today. And in a few sentences, tell us who you are and what you do. Yeah, good morning, Keith. I'm Jerry Levinson with Carpets of Arizona. Um, so what I do, I own the company Carpets of Arizona, but this company really runs without us now. Uh, another one of my big interest is uh, I run the Flooring Dealer and More group on Facebook. So I help consult and help other flooring dealers to grow their business and get to a point where they can run their business without them being in it. Being successful and then passing it on. That's what it's all about, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of fun. So speaking of that, what's the best thing about being a business leader? There's a lot of stuff. I'm very creative. So I like implementing other ideas. I did have a job. I sold a business and worked for that company, was getting paid really well, but I didn't enjoy it because I wasn't in charge and in control. And I've got a lot of creative ideas and things I want to do. So I like doing things that uh, defy industry norms, you know, uh, just because this is not the way the industry do it, then I want to try that. You know, I want to try things that are more, what I find with our industry, especially, it's very uh, product focused, not people focused. So um, everything I do is more customer focused, customer oriented. So the marketing, the sales tools, everything we create, is it's all about the customer, not the company. That's great. And it's awesome to be innovative. And like you said, what better place to you know express your ideas and, and take in the creativeness than from an ownership and you know being the CEO and directing the company with your vision. So yeah, exactly. So you kind of mentioned this a little bit, maybe, but question number three, I hear from other leaders that their people strategy is often more challenging than their business strategy in running their business. Your the best advice I got, do you know who Dan Kennedy is? Yes. Dan Kennedy is, I, I tell people, he is to marketing and business like uh, Tony Robbins is to self-improvement. Uh, the gentleman that owns GKIC now is a guy named Adam Witte, and he was at a conference, a Dan Kennedy conference. And one thing he said that really stuck with me is, your job is not to grow a great company. Your job is to grow people, to grow a great company. So I've got that sign on my door. I've got it in a couple of places. And it is, you know, focus on my people to grow the company, not the company itself necessarily. So yeah, it's, it's important. You want a business that runs without you. I mean, that's what being a business owner is. You know, you own a business, not a job. If you're the one doing all the work, then you don't own a business, you own a job. Right. So um, being able to go away and not answer phone calls and, not worry about day-to-day -day operations is, is really important. It's a little boring too. I mean, if you don't have to do anything and, and I don't, I just got out of a relationship I was in, but I, I went into this relationship hot and heavy with this gal and, and wasn't spending any time at work. Well, I had the freedom to do that. You know, I could go away to Rocky Point for the weekend. I can go do stuff because the business ran whether I was here or not. But it also gives you the time to, you know, install those creative ideas that you were talking about too, so. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not always easy trying to be creative, but when, yeah, when you do have an idea, you go about it and you, and you see, it, I, I'm always fascinated by people that, that run across problems and problems are opportunities, right? And uh, when they say things like this always happens, well, why don't you sit down and think of a way to overcome that, that problem or that challenge? And usually whenever you do that, it becomes an opportunity. We have a sales program called the Home Seller Dream Program. And uh, I wanted to reach out to real estate agents, um, but when developing this program, the question was, is, okay, how can I help them sell the house faster for more money? You know, how can I become an asset to them? Not go to them and say, hey, I'm a really great guy. You should use us. We have great low prices. Everybody's doing that. Alarm companies, landscape, pest control. They're all doing the same message. So um, that's another big tip. You're not competing against other people in your industry. You're competing against everybody for attention. So going after a real estate agent, how can I help them? So we came up with the Home Seller Dream Program. You can get new carpet for $100 down, and then you don't have to pay for it until the house is sold. So we get higher margins on that. But the messaging works really good because uh, when we're competing against other people, I've got a system that's going to help them sell the house faster for more money. It's a direct benefit to them, you know, where other people are saying, hey, we're really good guys. Use us. That's really cool. Awesome. All right. So question number four, what strategy would you like to share with other business leaders? So um, it kind of goes into that home seller dream uh, program. It's the uh, ultimate sales. Um, <laughs> I can't even remember uh, uh, the ultimate sales strategy. I did create the strategy. I got a PDF <laughs> and everything, but it, it, take whatever it is that you do that's ordinary and make it extraordinary. And I'll go uh, over an example. Uh, we sell carpet and 
again, uh, you've got to look at everything from a customer's point of view. Um, I kind of reject the idea of a USP, a, a unique selling proposition. I think it should be a, U, uh, a UBP, a unique buying opportunity or UBO. Um, what is the unique buying opportunity that the customer has to do business with you? You know, what's their experience going to be? And we go through a process of, of your flooring that is all about you as the customer. So first, we're going to come out and give you a guaranteed accurate estimate. Then uh, uh, we have, it goes through, I can't remember all the process now, but I've got like eight steps. Um, but we talk about, um, we are going to tear out your carpet. We're going to dispose of it. We're not going to leave it out on the sidewalk or anything. And then we're going to sweep your floors and inspect all the tax strip, make sure everything's good. Uh, and then we treat your floors with Dumbo spray that kills dog urine, mold, mildew, bacteria, and odors. The Dumbo spray is certainly unique. It's been huge, but it's creating this experience. Um, now we're going to install your new, new pad and new carpet on a fresh, clean surface. That sounds really nice and assuring. Now, if they have any of those odors, then, you know, we solved the problem without them asking, hey, do you have a treatment? You know, now when they talk to somebody else, they don't have a treatment. But the other thing that we did is we talked about the process that we're going to tear it out. We're going to uh, throw it away. So does everybody else. But what happens when you're in an industry or profession, you start taking for granted that customers know what you do. And they don't. They don't know the process. So explaining it in a really dumbed down way. Stay away from the technical jargon. Stay away from you know, things that they don't understand. And talk to them about their experience. How is it going to be doing business with you? And I've done this with other people in other industries. And you can do this in any industry. You know, and one of the things I've written two books, uh, one of the chapters in, in the books, both books, is how to make the buying process easy. So you want to make it easy for customers to buy from you. You know, and, and the way you do that is packaging your deals together in a way that makes it easy to get everything for one price. You know, you can say one low price. Um, you know, definitely I encourage people to charge more money and offer discounts because discounts do work. Sales do work. Specials do work. But often inflate a price. You know, everybody likes to save money, but, you know, sometimes in order for them to save money, you have to charge more. And just the impression you give is, is that they're getting a good value because you're giving them everything. You don't go a la carte. And because and, when you do that and you show them the price, I love it when people say, um, I don't want to rip off customers. Well, that's good. Then do what you said you were going to do for the price you agreed to do it for. It has nothing to do with the price that you charge. It has to do with the, the product and the service that you deliver. And did you do what you said you would do for the price you agreed to do it for? If you did that, then you can't rip off the customer no matter how much you charge. They agreed to go with it. So um, they have a choice. So a lot of times we're getting calls for people. They feel more comfortable doing business with us, even at a much higher price. And we are more expensive than most people in the Valley. So that's a great strategy. And like you said, you know, a lot of times we look at it from an egocentric perspective ourselves rather than from the customers and, and even the basic things to reassure them that, Hey, we do those things because they don't know the details. And, you know, yeah, I really learned that. So. I created something called the consumer guide. Uh, I used to be in the window covering business, the consumer guide for buying blinds in Arizona. So it told you all about what you should think about when you're buying window coverings in your master bedroom and your family room. And it answered a lot of qu common questions. Do I have to do the same window coverings throughout my house? I never promoted my own company. I was only the author of this guide. Mm -hmm. And I never said why we were going to do a good job for you or why you should hire us. But, and it was really profound that the lesson learned, I don't matter. You know, all that matters is them and their experience. You know, it's like referrals. Why does somebody refer you? People don't refer you because they like you and they like your company. People refer you because they like their friend and they know you're going to take care of their friend. And it's just like referring a movie. You don't give a damn about the actors or the director, you know, or the company or the uh, Harkins or AMC. You know, you care about your friend's experience. Well, that's why you refer another company because you trusted them enough to refer them to a friend. You're doing your friend a favor. You're not doing the company a favor. So, you know, when you get into some of the psychology about some of this stuff, it's really fascinating when you start studying people and learning, you know, what truly makes people tick instead of what I think. Right. That, you know, why do people buy from you? Oh, we do a really good job. No, I mean, people expect you're going to do a good job. People hire companies all the time. And companies that don't do a good job don't have a presentation and say, well, we're not very good, but we're, we're less expensive. So just the opposite doesn't work, you know, saying that we're really good. People assume you're going to be good. You don't have to do that. 
but going walking them through the, the steps of their experience and what to expect, it gives them confidence to know, to have expectations and know what they're going to expect. Some great insights and a great strategy there, I think would be helpful for most businesses. And I wish we had more time to focus on that, but kind of moving on to question number five, what other successful business owners or CEOs like yourself would you like to maybe acknowledge, do a shout out to, or would be good on the podcast? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, there's a gentleman, Jason Goldberg, uh, runs a $100 million company out in Ohio, uh, a very, very smart, very successful uh, guy. Um, Tim Moss uh, runs a pool company out here. Um, can't think of the name of his pool company, but very, very successful guy. I, I go to a mastermind group once a month and uh, uh, just love being around other entrepreneurs, other success-minded people that, that uh, you know, think outside the box and and really work at their craft and work at their business. Well, great. Well, maybe we can follow up with them and see if uh, they would be available to give us some insights as well. <laughs> so question number six, just kind of a final fun question. Tell me about one of your favorite past bosses. Um, I've always worked for myself. So <laughs> that's an interview question I use, you know, uh, and uh, uh, name something that your previous boss did sure. that you think they could have done a better job. <laughs> That's an interview question I use, but um, I've never really worked for anybody. So I've always been self-employed. Well, that's an awesome position to be in. So, yeah. but we do appreciate you taking time and great to hear your insights and everything. Uh, before we go, can you tell people how they can maybe connect with you? Uh, the best way is uh, jerry at five foot six consulting.com. And the five foot six is uh, we're a small family owned business. No one over five foot six. So it's the number five, the word foot, and the number six. Jerry at five foot six consulting.com. I love that. So, all right. And again, thank you so much for being here. And this is Keith Weaver with the Top Executive Strategy Podcast. And for more insights and to follow us, you can follow us at Weaver Business Coaching. You can find us on LinkedIn. And of course, listen to us on your favorite podcast platform. And we wish you all the best success.